Hello everyone and once again welcome to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, your senior instructor here at Digital Drafting Systems. Today we will be looking at some interesting things to do with dimensions, parameters, and formulas. First we will see the use of formulas in a dimension. Then we will create a global dimension parameter that contains a formula. After we will then combine named global parameters with formulas. Did you know that you can input formulas directly into your dimensions as you create your objects? Let's see how that's done. Let's go ahead and erase these dimensions here and erase this window which is what we're going to be putting back. Okay. What the intent is to create the window so as to one end it will lay directly in the middle of this wall here. The wall's length is 24 feet. Let's see how that's done. We'll go ahead and take window, insert, we'll go ahead and place it. And before I select anything, I will come over here to the witness dimension line and I will go ahead and input a dimension here. In order for the dimension to understand that it's the, uh, there is a formula being implemented, you first must start with an equal. Okay, now we're going to take the length of the wall, which is going to be 24 feet. So for that, we will open up brackets, say 24 feet. Okay, will be divided then by 2. And that is one part of our formula. When that is done, then we will go ahead and subtract, open brackets, okay, space, 36 inches, which is the length of the window, which will also be divided by 2. I like consistency here, so 2, and then we'll close the brackets. When I hit the enter, hit, see what happens. It places it. To verify that it is in fact in the middle of this wall, we can come over here to Architecture, Model Lines, type in SM for Snap Midpoint, click and click to verify that in fact the window is exactly how we had positioned it, where one edge is smack in the middle of the wall and then this places it. Let's continue and see something else. Did you know that you can use global parameters like placing a door jam or for consistency using formulas? Well, let's see how it's done. We will first go to Manage. And in Manage, we'll go ahead and create a global parameter. OK. The global parameter that we will create is going to be new global parameter. We'll call this one door jam placement. Okay, it's common length and it's a dimension. We'll say okay. For that, we're going to implement a formula here. And the, the under the formulas field, you'll notice that it's already starting with an equal. So all we really have to do is input the formula, which is 36 inches, which is the width, the length or rather the width of the door specifically. You don't have to put it. I'm just trying to convert this into a more complex formula so you see that this actually works. We'll go ahead and divide that by 2. Okay, and we'll then add 10 inches for good measure. And we'll say apply. And say okay. Now nothing's happened because we have to then assign that parameter to one of the dimensions that has to do with the doors, which is this one here. And you'll notice automatically moves it in place using the, par the parameters formula to identify the exact location. Okay. If I want to use it in different doors, it's not a problem. All you have to do is select it, assign it, and there it is. Very fast, very easy way to go ahead and make sure that you have consistency in your door placements. Even better than that, did you know that you can mix global parameters and formulas? In this particular case, we're going to take this value, which is going to, we're going to call these the small value, 
and this one we're going to call the large value of this full wall. These two values are identifying exactly where that wall is going to be. Okay, so if we come over here to manage in the global parameters, you will notice that I've already taken the liberty of defining the small wall placement gap parameter and the large wall placement gap parameter. Before I even assign it, what I will do is I will go ahead and here in the formulas field for the small wall placement gap, I will go ahead and place the name of the large wall placement gap. You'll notice that I'm actually control C, which is copying these, this value, and I'm going to paste it, control V here. The reason why I'm doing that is because to me it's a lot easier just to go ahead and copy paste this full name and paste it in here because uppercase and lowercase and spelling is valid. It will recognize it. So if you're not exactly the way this is written, then it won't see it. We will go ahead and then multiply that, asterisk is the multiplication symbol, by 0.5, which is basically the same as saying divided. And then we'll go ahead and add four feet. I don't have to put the apostrophe indicating that it's feet because it understands it. We'll go ahead and apply it. Say OK. And all it is is just a matter of let's define this one first to be the large wall placement. You will notice that it's got a little pencil on it indicating that there is a parameter assigned to that particular dimension. We'll go ahead and select the small one and watch what's going to happen here. Notice what happened. It actually grew towards the bottom away from this particular wall because in this string dimension my first dimension was here. Went to here and so on and so forth. That makes this move downward. And you'll also notice that because of the dimensions values automatically my large wall increases. As you can see, you can actually input dimensions with formulas as you create. You can create parameters that have formulas in it, and you can combine name parameters with formulas in order to get your job done a lot faster. I hope you've enjoyed this small blog. Thank you for coming. My name is Jim Cuervo, Senior Instructor here at Digital Drafting Systems, asking you to be safe. We'll see you the next one. Thank you.